All right. Good morning, brothers and sisters. This morning we're going to do a little reading. We're going to go uh, not much reading actually. We're going to we're going to just look at some words. Uh, we're going to go to Second Corinthians chapter eleven, and we're going to just read uh, verses one through three to start with. It says, "I would to, would to God ye could bear with me in a little of my folly, and indeed bear with me." For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband. Remember, that's important. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. People think that this means that it's really simple. Christ is really easy and simple to understand. And that's not what this means. The simplicity he's talking about here is a singleness. There's one Christ. There's one Christ. Let's look at the word simplicity to start with. Haplotes, singleness. Hence, simplicity, purity, or graciousness. There's one Christ. And it goes into showing a few of the things. It comes from the alpha primitive and uh, and pell, which means to fold, and it's haplotes. Properly, singleness or without folds, like a piece of cloth unfolded. Personally, I don't think that's the greatest definition right there, but when it goes into the next one, that's a really good one. It says, not compounded or overcomplicated, but that's not necessarily the best one either. Single-threaded versus multi-threaded. Now, that would be the one that we're talking about. You see, Christ is single-threaded. There's one Christ. It's not like he's a rope that has a thousand different, a, a thousand different ways in him, a thousand different Christs there to choose from. There's one, sing, one single Christ, one single way, not multiple different Christs. Because he's going on to preach here. He says, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached. What he's talking about is if someone comes up and says that, that Jesus is okay with Christmas, even though Christmas is Christ's mass, and it's not anything has has nothing to do with what Jesus ever said or did in his entire life then they're preaching another Jesus if they come and tell you that that Jesus wanted us to eat crackers and grape juice and that was a tradition he handed down to us then they're preaching a different Jesus because the tradition he handed to us was to eat and drink of his flesh and blood which is is truth and to die a martyr's death, the outer man dying and the inner man living. That was what Jesus preached. And so, whenever they come to you and tell you that this Jesus is the way to heaven, the one that has crackers and grape juice and celebrates Easter and Christmas and, and goes ahead and pulls in other pagan holidays and they have trunk or treat Halloween at their churches and things like that, then they're preaching another Jesus they're acting as if Jesus is multi-threaded and has many facets. Well, he's not multi-threaded. He's a, he, there's, it's one thread. There's one way, and it's, it, it, in the word simplicity doesn't mean it's, the, it's a simple way. And we're going to prove that it's not simple, first of all, because we know that things are, are not easy to understand in the Bible or else everyone would understand it. So what I'm going to do after this, we're going to go right over here and we're going to go to 2 Peter. And we're going to read uh, verses uh, 14 through uh, 16 at least. Says, wherefore, beloved, we're in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. Sorry. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, 
Be diligent. Be diligent. What does diligent mean? It says, be diligent that ye may be found in him in peace without spot and blameless. Be diligent. What does the word diligent even mean in the, in the Bible? Let's find out. Be eager, zealous, properly, be fast, figuratively, to move speedily by showing full diligence, by fully applying oneself, oneself acting fervently to, to accomplish all that God assigns through faith. You see, we should all be acting as fervent as we possibly can to accomplish all that God assigns through faith for the simple fact that we're not promised tomorrow. There's no promise of tomorrow, so why aren't you fervently seeking the Lord today? Okay, let's go back and look at this. It says, be diligent, be fervent, that you may be found in Him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. You see, there's a singleness in Christ, not a simplicity. Many things in the, that we have to learn in the Lord are extremely hard to be grasped, hard to be understood. Hard to be understood. Let's look at that word. Hard to be understood. Dus noetos. Hard to understand. It comes from the word dis, D-Y-S, which means difficult, and noetos, which means understanding. And noetos comes from the word noema, which means mind. Properly, hard to process and mentally, hard to mentally process what is intellectually difficult to capture the true sense of. You see, there's a singleness in Christ, but simple, absolutely not. Says, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You see, they take and they, the un unlearned, the people who do not go and study, they just look at the English language and say, okay, that's what it means. I'm going to take this English word and use it, even though it was written in Greek and it's been translated. And they don't go look and begin studying to see what the Bible actually says. Those people are the ones that twist the unlearned and the unstable. So let's see what unstable means. Unsettled unpropped, unsteady. You see, you're supposed to be having an understanding, a standing under of Christ, a standing upright. Derived from the alpha privative, which is, means not, and sterizo means to confirm. Properly, not established, unstable. Describing someone who literally does not have a staff to lean on. Hence, a person who cannot be relied on because they are not steady or do not remain fixed. Remember, it says, meddle not with them that are given to change. You can find that scripture. It says these unstable twist to their own, own destruction. Ye, therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before... You've been warned ahead of time that unlearned and unstable people are going to twist the scriptures to their own destruction. Seeing you know this before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and, grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
to him to him be glory both now and forever amen see grow in the knowledge and in the grace of our lord and savior jesus christ it's the only way to be stable it's the only way to learn of the singleness that is in christ there isn't a christ that requires you to get sprinkled in water at one church and then a Christ that requires you to get dipped in water at another church. And another Christ that requires you to get uh, sprinkled on your head as a baby with water. There's not different Christs that require these different things. You need to search and look out and see which Christ, you like. whether you're searching and, and following the Christ or one of these multi-corded, stranded uh messengers of satan that has disguised themselves as christ i love you all brothers and sisters you have a blessed wonderful day stay strong in the lord jesus loves you